Hello, my dear friends. How are you doing? Hope you are having an amazing day and not having to deal with drama. Ready for new stories I have for you today? Let's go to the first one. And don't forget to listen to the end of the story, guys, to hear my insights. Enjoy the stories. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, don't forget to leave a comment. I'm a 39-year-old man recently diagnosed with hypertension, type 2 diabetes, and CHF. I've been married for the past 10 years with the love of my life. A 35-year-old bright, attractive, and hardworking woman with whom I have a beautiful 4-year-old daughter. Two days after Christmas Eve, I was at work when I started wheezing and feeling chest pain. Before I knew it, I had passed out. I got admitted to the nearest hospital, where I got my CHF diagnosis. This forced me, after a long time of deliberation, to finally put my affairs in order. I also have a 46-year-old sister who has, unfortunately, not made the best decisions in life. After a rough divorce and a major struggle with alcohol, she's now homeless with two kids, 14 and 9, for whom the father rarely paid child support the first few years and then left, so she has been living rent-free in an apartment I own since 2016. Sometimes I will also provide them food and services, to which my wife did not initially agree but finally grew fond of the kids, to the point that she offers to take care of them whenever my sister relapses. I love my nephews and sister with all my heart, in the same way I love my wife and my daughter. Anyhow, in view of recent events, I feel that, should I be gone soon, my wife could keep working and manage to start over and provide for our daughter without many challenges. She's a top executive at Global Firm and makes good money. I also know she has been able to save a decent amount for her retirement so I don't feel they would be going through any financial strains. For my sister, I cannot say the same, as she rarely makes ends meet. Her work opportunities are limited also, since she decided to skip high school and marry instead of pursuing a degree. Long story short, I wrote my wife and daughter out of my will, leaving them only symbolic effects per my lawyer's recommendation, so that all my goods will go to my sister and nephews the moment I'm gone. Total worth is around 1.1 million. My wife does not know yet about any of these new arrangements, although I'm planning on telling her soon. Hopefully she will understand my decision. My father called me the A-word for doing this, but he also won't help my sister and has disinherited her in favor of my other two brothers. He will probably write me from his will as well, since I'm likely dying before him. Am I the A-hole? Well, I think giving it all to sister is a bad idea. I understand that she is going through an extremely rough time. But giving an insane amount of money to an addict is basically asking for a problem. I understand OP loves and cares about her well-being, but giving her a large sum of money will not help anything and potentially make it worse. OP is only enabling her by giving her no responsibility to clean up her act. Free rent and now free money. She'll only waste that money by drinking it away. Also, OP says his wife is the love of his life, but is making a major family decision without her input. It's such a slap in the face to OP's wife and daughter. If I was the wife, I would divorce him. And now let's see if the community agrees with me. Tally098 says, You're the a-hole in more ways than I can say. You have decided you don't need to provide for your wife and child when you die, but are giving everything to an addict instead. You'll be lucky if your wife doesn't leave you now and let you die alone. Your child will grow up hating you, never remembering you but knowing you cared more for an addict and her children more than him or her. You were responsible for your child, not just your wife. What happens if your wife gets sick, your kid has an accident, or your wife loses her job? I guess she can call the homeless addict and hope she hasn't spent all the money yet. Leave your niece, nephew a small amount of money for college and stop enabling your sister. You will destroy your family if you try to do this. I'm not sure you can legally abandon your child and leave someone else money where you live. Be prepared for a lawsuit after you die, and for your family to hate each other. Nice way to be remembered. Instruction Key 837 says, You're the a-hole. It's your money, but you've decided to leave it entirely to an adult which can make their own choices, yet refuses to be responsible instead of the woman you committed your life to under oath and the child you brought into this world. Can't imagine how well a freshly orphaned four-year-old will handle knowing that their daddy didn't care enough about them to put them more prominently into the will. Full on double rainbow says, sorry, but you're the a-hole. Think how your daughter will feel knowing you left everything to someone else. And not only does she not get you, she has next to nothing to remember you by. 10 years from now, all she will know of you is that you wrote her and her mother out of the will and left her nothing while her cousins have every reminder invaluable you have. 
She's not even worth one-third to you? Not worth an education fund? No favorite shirt or bottle of cologne to keep your smell? No books or journals to let her learn who you were? No small keepsakes to put on her shelf to keep you close? I get where you're coming from, but even if your emotionally bereft widow can rebuild her life from nothing easily, she'll be doing so in mourning and all alone while trying to explain to your daughter why daddy's not there. Worrying about losing her home and rebuilding her life financially, as well as emotionally, is a hell of a thing to do to someone. I'm a 60-year-old father of three, two sons, ages 32 and 28, and a daughter, 22. This issue involves my middle son and my daughter-in-law, B, 27 female. During their wedding planning six months ago, B made it clear she values her independence and feminism opting not to take our family's last name to maintain her identity. I respect her decision, despite our family tradition favoring surname sharing. I genuinely appreciate B. She's a wonderful partner for my son, albeit sometimes her strong opinions and idealistic views seem to overlook her privilege. Our family vacations have been on pause due to virus and significant life events. With finances not being an issue for us, my wife and I have traditionally covered these trips. There have been expectations of these trips, such as prioritizing family time and activities over personal preferred activities. This year, we're planning a bit of a more luxurious trip to the Maldives. However, B has been assertively expressing her desire to break from tradition, evident during their wedding. She opted out of typical customs like flower girls, a mother-son dance, and being walked down the aisle by her father. Although I funded the wedding, I kept my feelings to myself after my son requested not to add to their stress. I didn't appreciate the communication style that was used and told my son, who said he would relay this feedback to B. I said she was rather rude to my wife, who was sad she wouldn't be partaking in a mother-son dance, i.e. not understanding why she would be sad there wouldn't be a dance. For the upcoming trip, I've considered stating that I'll only cover expenses for those bearing our last name. After B's continuous emphasis on independence and breaking from tradition, I felt this was a reasonable stance. I was discussing this with my son, who asked if I could cover their expenses this time. I thought about it and decided not to. I declined. My rationale is that B's firm stance on independence should extend to navigating the repercussions of their decisions, financial ones included. My son is disappointed, and my wife believes I'm being overly rigid, arguing that family support transcends proving a point. I'm torn between respecting B's independence and wanting to assist them. Am I the a-hole if I decide not to pay for my daughter-in-law's portion of the family trip due to her insistence on independence and refusal to adopt our family surname? It's OP's money and he is free to spend it however he wants, but he should not be surprised if his attempt to punish B for not being the submissive daughter-in-law he was hoping for ends up in OP's son reducing contact with him. OP doesn't like her and doesn't respect her and does this because of control in my opinion. Cat Lover 76 says, Wow, you are really the a-hole. The way you're presenting this, you're making it clear that you withholding the vacation funds is all about punishing your daughter-in-law for making different decisions. Your reasons are small and pathetic. So what if she didn't take your surname? Is your ego really that fragile? And let's be honest, this is all about your ego. It's understandable that your wife was disappointed that there was no mother-son dance. But this is something you get disappointed about for an hour or two, and then you get over it. You need to butt out of their relationship. How they handle their finances and naming their children is their business. And stop trying to use money to control your daughter-in-law. If you keep this up, you're going to end up having your son go low or no contact and cut you off from his family, including their future kids. Get over yourself and your sad, pathetic ego and cover your daughter-in-law's expenses the same way you're covering everyone else's. Perfect Tangerine 267 says, You're the a-hole. Have you checked the date lately? It's 2024, damn. One, your name is not more important than hers. Two, the name someone has isn't relative, thank God, to who is or is not part of your family. Are you going to cut off your daughter if she takes her husband's name? What a crazy thing to think. Three, you paid for it, but it was their wedding. You're upset because, among other things, there were no flower girls. Really, who cares? Weddings are supposed to be what the married couple wants, not what their parents want. Don't pay if you don't want to, that's your business. But since you asked, your reasoning is backwards and frankly, really gross. Primary Criticism 929 says, I think you're the a-hole. Your son, the grown man, 
could have told his then fiance that her independence was her thing and that he wanted a mother-son dance at his wedding and that was not negotiable. He didn't. He didn't care about the dance either. I don't see why you're taking issue with the no flower girl or not having her father walk her down the aisle. Really? How did that hurt you? As for the vacation, did you even talk to B about it directly? Or do you have so little respect for women that you think only husbands can make decisions for the couple? I, 24 female, am engaged to my fiance, Adrian, 25 male. I just managed to luck out and purchase a vintage wedding dress for about $1,200 from a lovely older woman who was selling it on eBay. I have a future sister-in-law, Selena, 22 female, who I let store the dress in her own home while Adrian and I deep cleaned our closet so it didn't get damaged and wasn't hanging around for anyone besides immediate family or close friends to see. Yesterday, Adrian and I went to go pick up the dress since we were done cleaning out our closet. I was so excited to have it back and was planning on showing it to my mother. To my shock and horror, Selena had, in her own words, modernized the dress while it was at her place. She had gutted it. It was now essentially a mini dress with barely any resemblance to what it was previously. I freaked out at her, saying she had no right to do that to my wedding dress and that she had ruined it. Selena complained, saying that it was a surprise and supposed to be a pre-wedding or engagement gift. Selena tried to get Adrian to defend her, but he sided with me and said she completely and utterly overstepped, which surprised me because he's pretty protective over her. We left without the dress and Selena muttering about how she did me a favor. It was later that night when I got the idea to make her pay for another wedding dress. There was another dress that I had been eyeing that cost a bit less, but I chose the other dress over it. I talked about it with my fiancé, and he agreed that Selena should pay for the dress, since she ruined the first one. I sent the link to the dress to Selena over text and asked her to pay for it. Selena texted back, saying that she wouldn't pay for the replacement dress and that I should be fine with wearing the first one or paying for the replacement dress myself. We argued over text for a while before Selena just stopped responding and left me on red. This morning, I checked my phone and saw a voicemail from my future mother-in-law saying that Selena shouldn't have to pay for the replacement and that the alterations she made were a sweet gift. I asked Adrian about it, and he said that I should stick to my plans of making Selena pay for it. But now that future mother-in-law is involved, I'm reconsidering it. Am I the a-hole? I can't even imagine what kind of sick mind would take someone else's wedding dress and completely change it when they weren't asked to. This was done with cruel intentions, and yes, absolutely she should be forced to pay for a new dress. I think OP should take her to small claims court right away. This is going to set the tone for OP's relationship with her in-laws for the rest of her life. OP should not let them walk all over her and become a permanent doormat. Traditional Baker 7 says, What the heck? Who alters someone's wedding dress without being asked to? She should definitely pay for a new dress. If future mother-in-law thinks it was a good idea, she should buy you a new dress. Bonham42 says, Wow, not the a-hole, but I would tell her if she doesn't pay for the dress, you will be seeking legal action. Definitely resend her wedding invitation. If future mother-in-law has anything else to say, she can either pay for the replacement dress and or not come to the wedding. I'm sorry this happened to you. I can't believe the audacity of your future sister-in-law. Pinoy Brad says, Small claims and no wedding invite for the future sister-in-law. If future mother-in-law doesn't like, tough titties. And you could just not invite her too for less drama. My parents divorced before I was born. I'm 16 female. My dad married Bree when I was 5. She has a daughter from a previous relationship, Misty, 16. Me and Misty were close growing up, but when we were 14, we sort of went our own ways because she ended up with a different friend group than me. I mean, we still talked and hung out, but it wasn't the same. Anyway, she got pregnant to her ex. Our parents were shocked and angry when she told them, but they said they will help support her. Her friend group dropped her and she got depressed. So my parents asked if she could hang out with me and my friends, which was fine with me. She did seem to be more happy, but as this pregnancy went on, she would get more emotional. One minute she would be happy and the next she would be all moody. I know it's just pregnancy hormones and me and my friends tried to be understanding. But then she started getting clingy with me and wanted to go everywhere with me. We went to the mall and I wanted to try out some clothes and she got really upset when she couldn't fit the clothes I was trying on, and she really started crying. I had to ring Dad to come pick us up. I told Dad and Bree after Misty was asleep that I needed a break from her. 
They told me to be more understanding and to look at it from her point of view. I was frustrated, but I decided to just deal with it. My friend's birthday is happening next week. Misty wanted to come, and I had to tell her that I was only invited. She got upset and started crying again. My dad and Bree told me it would be nice if I could ask my friend if she could go, or I stay home and keep Misty company, and I got mad and refused. They started on the look at her point of view. I just had enough and said if I can't go, then I was going to move to my cousin's home because I can't stand being around Misty anymore. They were furious because Misty heard, and they demanded I apologize to her, but I wouldn't, and said it's not my fault she got pregnant. Since then, everyone's been tense and my parents aren't talking to me, and Misty hardly leaves her room now, and I'm feeling bad and thinking I went too far. Am I the a-hole? Elegant Cup 23 says, Why do you have to look at her perspective, but no one has to look at yours? You're young, you've done absolutely nothing wrong. Yet you're expected to forgo your happiness and youth because she made a foolish mistake. Next time dad or stepmom say that, ask that they do the same for you. You were her stepsister, not her emotional support human. You were her stepsister, not her therapist, and you most certainly should not be forced to assist in raising a child you were not responsible for making because we all know where this is heading. Leo Point of View says, Not the a-hole, but get out of that house and over to your cousin's place ASAP. As soon as the baby arrives, your life will be hell. Go now while you can. Slender Man is my dad says, move out. They're coddling her at your expense because your stepsister was irresponsible. Once that kid is born, it will be 1,000 times worse.